You look like a towel boy. Get out of here, get changed, and come back like an owner. Now, f off. Gordon Ramsay's hit TV show Hotel Hell has seen quite a few disastrous hotels over the years. However, thanks to Ramsay's interventions, many of them were able to find redemption and become superstar businesses. So stay tuned for the top 10 changed hotels from Hotel Hell. The Haunted Hotel. I don't think I'm gonna get possessed staying here. I think I'm gonna get a disease. When visiting the oldest inn in Connecticut, Ramsey probably expected antique charm instead of complete dilapidation. Owned by siblings TJ and Chris, the Curtis House Inn struggled to draw customers before Ramsey arrived. One of the busiest weekends ever for this hotel, the Mother's Day. And I'm the only one staying in the hotel. That's that's not good. Ramsey was blown away by the state of the rooms, as his first inspection of them revealed a dirty old footprint on his pillow, an unlockable door, and dead flies coating his room. The inn's restaurant offered no salvation, as Ramsey was served a raw burger. Oh, Jesus, this is raw. When he stepped back into the kitchen to see how bad things really were, he was disgusted to find Chris in the back wiping down plates with a filthy cloth. Ramsey's sentiments were mirrored by the inn's guests. During an intervention with the owners, the guests explained that they suffered with gross windows and unwashed and unsanitary bedsheets. To top it all off, apparently the inn was haunted by a ghost. At least got one regular guest. TJ and Chris struggled to work cohesively with one another until Ramsey sat down with their mother and attempted to salvage the siblings' relationship. This marked the start of a new beginning for the Curtis House Inn, and Ramsey's team blew everyone away by completely remaking the hotel, with working locks, a new menu, and a much-needed computer. A paranormal expert also gave their seal of approval that the inn was indeed haunted, making it a tourist destination destination for ghost hunters everywhere. The inn has continued to flourish since Ramsey's visit, with TJ and Chris capitalizing on the paranormal aspects of the building. The minute you don't, the place is doomed. And numerous positive reviews online. Before we move on, take a second to hit that subscribe button and that bell to join our notification squad. Come and play with us. Now let's see Ramsey's next mission, a hotel for the dogs. So far, my stay at Vermont's fake Four Seasons has been a huge disappointment. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay has never had to save a real Four Seasons hotel, but he came pretty close when he was called in to help an inn in Vermont with a confusing name, the Four Seasons Inn. He was confused to learn that the owner, Sandy, was in no way affiliated with the popular hotel chain, but had somehow managed to avoid being sued. Meant to be a dog-friendly inn, neither humans nor dogs were interested in visiting the hotel until Ramsay's arrival. Sandy's dog, Layla, was the only canine companion during Ramsay's visit, and she made sure to spread dog hair all over over the establishment, much to Ramsey's chagrin. Trust me, that has never, ever been clean. Ugh. Absolutely disgusting. The staff of the inn were not overly motivated, as none of them were receiving salaries from Sandy. To make matters worse, when Ramsey tried to get some relaxation in the hotel swimming pool, he was confronted with dog poo in the water. Obviously, this inn needed a lot of help from Ramsey. Luckily, he came prepared and got to work saving the inn. He's as good a chef as he is an innkeeper. Useless. First of all, Ramsey fixed the hotel's name to be Layla's Riverside Lodge, and also updated all the hotel rooms to be clean and comfortable. Ramsey was willing to drop some cash to liven up the place with an investment of $100,000 in new linens for the rooms. The dog kennels received the same attention from Ramsey's team, and soon, guests were finally giving Sandy's Inn a chance. The inn was able to survive and flourish as a popular dog-friendly hotel. If it hadn't been for you, I would not be here. That's the truth. The Challenge of Hotel Chester. This place is dead. Ramsey revealed his compassionate side when he dedicated himself to salvaging Hotel Chester and the lives of its owners, David and Suki Molander. Congratulations on the longest lunch I've ever had in my entire cooking career. Apparently, the hotel had been a success until a car accident severely injured David, leaving him bedridden for months. Ramsey was willing to help get the business back on its feet and began by addressing the key issues. This included the hotel restaurant, which took so long to put out food that Ramsey had to leave and take a nap while waiting for some disappointing sushi. Strawberry fields, I'd rather f eat a beetle. Ramsey put his cooking skills to good use by revamping the hotel menu to appeal to locals and the college crowd nearby, and also gave the hotel a beer garden to attract new customers. He even hired a professional chef to replace Suki in the kitchen and produce some quality meals. Ramsey also addressed the old, outdated hotel rooms by painting them and refurnishing them, much to the owner's delight. Ramsey's fixes seem to have worked, as the hotel remains in business. Online comments show that the beer garden is a huge hit, and hopefully things are looking up for both David and Suki as their business flourishes. I'm gonna kiss you too. So. <laughs> the Car Hotel. Why not the Ferrari of hotels? I'm more concerned what you were smoking at the time than what you were thinking. 
One of the most expensive hotels that Ramsey has ever visited was the Keating Hotel, owned by Eddie Kane and located in downtown San Diego. Eddie had obviously put a lot of love and money into his prized hotel, as he spent a whopping $1 million to hire a sports car designer to design the hotel interior. At $759 a night, Ramsey was sorely disappointed to find himself in a weirdly decorated hotel with furniture that was uncomfortable and awkward. Ramsey wasn't impressed by the hotel's room service either, as it came to him in cheap takeaway boxes and was inedible. The chef Brian was so overwhelmed by the poor working conditions that he fainted during a meeting with Ramsey, proving that changes definitely had to be made for everyone's sake. It's like he's a dead man walking. Yeah. Ramsey created a new menu to help Brian out and also worked with his team to renovate the Keating Hotel into an ideal place to stay. He removed some of these strange car design furniture and replaced it with comfortable pieces that guests could enjoy. The staff were pleased with his changes and with Ramsey's help, the hotel has remained open. New guests have kept the hotel busy and Ramsey's legacy lives on as a suite has been officially named in his honor. If I had one thing to say to Gordon right now, it's just, thanks. Staying in school. I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on. <laughs> most people would cringe at the thought of being stuck in their school overnight, but not John Hoff. John loved an old school building in his town so much that he decided to buy it and turn it into a hotel for everyone to enjoy. <laughs> Unfortunately, his Roosevelt Inn did not catch on, and he and his wife Tina were desperate for help by the time Ramsey arrived. Ramsey was unimpressed by his garishly pink room, which costed a substantial $319 per night. And he was even less pleased when he discovered an unpleasant smell permeating through the hotel. You can't smell those dogs? Oh, yes, I can. Instead of focusing his attention on filling up rooms or the ballroom with high-paying customers, John was wasting everyone's time by putting on bizarre murder mystery dinner plays. I just talked to my hand, you know. I talked to my hand. Oh, what yeah. a f Night. Have a You're good not night. 10 years old. In terms of the hotel rooms, Ramsey realized that they definitely needed to be revamped after taking a black light to the bedding and seeing numerous stains all across the linens and mattress. Even though John was a tough man to help, Ramsey did his best. One of the main changes that Ramsey made was with the ballroom, as he worked hard with his team to create a new space where John could host events like dances and wedding receptions. This was always a dream of Tina's, and Ramsey made it a reality by redecorating the room and securing a wedding booking for the hotel. This ballroom has changed the hotel and helped it to attract visitors from all around and kept the Hoffs in business. Ramsey saves the day. And look at that. Ugh, big dirty stain. The Angler's Lodge in Idaho may have been situated by the best fishing spots in Idaho, but business tragically dried up for its owners, Dave and Dee Dee. While the hotel had originally enjoyed success, Dave and Dee Dee's plans to expand the hotel were derailed when their son passed away. Luckily, Ramsey turned the place around and helped the couple get their business back on track. First of all, Ramsey decided that the rooms of the lodge had to change, as his bedroom consisted of stained bedding and a dark and dank atmosphere. The subpar rooms were mirrored by the disastrous hotel restaurant, run by a chef who Dave and Dee Dee don't even like. Is it best you go now? No, chef. You're gonna sink this place. Get a grip. The food that Ramsey tasted was obviously frozen, and he had one of the worst trout dishes of his life when he was served an unscaled piece of fish. Is that risotto or some of the plaster that your dad left over from building the new lodge? Another issue was the lack of community surrounding the hotel, as locals did not feel welcomed by the owners. There were a lot of issues for Ramsey to take on, but he dealt with them like a pro. He redid the guest rooms with his talented team to brighten them up and make sure they were in tip-top condition. Ramsey also addressed the restaurant concerns by overhauling the menu completely and inviting the community to dine at the hotel and support the local business. All of Ramsey's efforts were a success, as Angler's Lodge managed to survive and stay in business after after Ramsey left. Ramsey versus caretaker Karen. It smells like there's crap all over the floor. Probably because there's crap on the floor. This hotel was so messed up and disgusting that Ramsey needed two episodes to finally fix this business. There have been times when I have had diarrhea, but it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> We're talking about Towns Inn in West Virginia. Ramsey had his hands full when he met owners Jason and Anna, a couple who had planned on using the hotel both as an investment and as a hobby for Jason's mother, Karen. Every night you sleep in here. Upon arrival, Ramsey was greeted by clutter everywhere, from creepy dolls to expired loaves of bread. Speaking of food, the hotel's restaurant was almost worse than the rooms. Karen was serving six-month-old rotisserie chicken and boiling prepackaged burgers, much to the disgust of all the guests. Do you think your customer would want a Burger boiled in water. They seem to like them. 
Ramsey was outraged by the state of the hotel and really needed his team's support to try and fix the Towns Inn's numerous faults. They set to work and purged the rooms of all their dead bugs and dust and cleared away the horrendous clutter and expired food. I'm overwhelmed. Ramsey also demanded that the restaurant be revamped with heavy cleaning and a major menu change, which helped draw locals back into the dining room. Under Ramsey's watchful eye, the hotel remained open and the family continued to run their business. Hopefully, Ramsey doesn't have to see a six-month-old rotisserie chicken ever again. Bullet Hotel I want to stop right now and shut this place down. Bullet holes probably aren't what you want to see when you arrive at a hotel, but that's what Ramsey was faced with when he visited the Brick Hotel in Newton, Pennsylvania. Run by Verinder Quar and her son CJ, the Brick Hotel was struggling to attract customers and was eager to have Ramsey's professional touch. You called yes, the yes. police because you wanted your money. Yes, yes. you're threatening us. Ramsey was blown away by the crazy conditions of the hotel rooms, from the aforementioned bullet holes in the walls to smashed up windows. He was also informed that there was no real cleaning schedule and that there was a severe mold infestation creeping through the hotel. The mold was such a big issue that Ramsey had to shut down the whole hotel and evacuate guests to avoid breathing in the dangerous spores. Obviously, Ramsey had his work cut out for him with this place. With Ramsey's supervision, the hotel was renovated from top to bottom, with the mold being one of the first things to go. I'm gonna wash my hands. The hotel rooms were also redecorated to get rid of those worrisome bullet holes, and the alterations that Ramsey made to the hotel restaurant were also a huge hit. Locals toured around the relaunched hotel and loved it. And in the months that followed, CJ and Verinder saw their business start to boom again. Good work, Ramsey. Is it a tea party for rats or Stuart Little in for dinner tonight? A royal stay. I mean, what? <laughs> I wouldn't feed that to my cat. It's not every day that you can spend the night in a castle, but if you pay a visit to Ohio, you might just get your chance at Landall's Mohican Castle. When Ramsey arrived to the castle, however, it was losing money, and the owners were relying on Ramsey's expertise to make their establishment fit for a king again. Ramsey was actually impressed with the castle when he first saw it, but was much less amused by the piles of dead flies and ash that he found throughout his hotel room. The hotel was also supposed to be marketed as the prime place to hold events like weddings, but with a design disastrous dinner menu, people were disappointed by what the castle had to offer. Ramsey decided to test how well the hotel could perform under pressure by inviting a wedding party to stay with him at the hotel. And after watching the castle staff flounder and fail, Ramsey stepped up to save both the castle and the wedding. I mean, it looks like prison food. He had his team give the hotel event space a much-needed makeover and then set to work on the restaurant's menu. Ramsey helped the staff create an amazing dinner for the happily married couple, cementing the castle's reputation as an ideal wedding venue. Even after Ramsey left, the owners kept up the good work by booking more rooms and events than ever and received rave reviews. Food, hotels, castles, is there anything Ramsey can't fix? Beachfront Showdown. Gordon, get out of there. Seatbelt on. No doors and no seatbelt. One of the most challenging hotels that Ramsey ever had to fight for was the Beachfront Inn and Inlet, run by owner Brian, who refused to let Ramsey help him. Ramsey quickly realized that the hotel was not up to anyone's standards when he was shown his room, a musty bedroom with an extremely uncomfortable bed. I've had a really rough night. And so is my team. The lack of passion put into the hotel is reflected in the hotel's restaurant, where Ramsey was furious with the usage of frozen fish. Brian's family worked with a fish market, and Ramsey could not understand why Brian would ignore the fresh fish that he had at his fingertips and choose to settle for cheap frozen fillets instead. Not only was the food unappetizing, but it proved to be downright dangerous when Ramsey explored the hotel kitchen. Raw and cooked chicken were mixed in together, and some food items were so rotten that Ramsey couldn't even tell what they were supposed to be. Um, explain this monstrosity. What in the f is going on here? While Ramsey succeeded with renovating the rooms and upgrading the restaurant, the night of the relaunch was not perfect. Ramsey and Brian battled over the state of the food that was being served, and eventually Ramsey had to give up and leave the hotel altogether when Brian refused to listen to him. However, maybe Brian listened more than Ramsey thought, because after he left, Brian implemented some of Ramsey's advice and helped to bring the business back from the edge of disaster. The hotel stayed open, and maybe one day, Brian will admit that Ramsey knew what he was doing. Before you start booking your own hotel stay, stick around and click on one of our other great Ramsey videos.